Hey, Derek here, and if you are doing about $600,000 or less in sales and you wanna to grow to that your 1 million or 3 million plus mark of revenue in your business, you're in the right place, stay tuned. Okay, so before we get started, big thumbs, likes up, hit that thumbs button and subscribe to the channel. Super appreciated. Helps me create more content to keep things rocking and rolling in your business. So first thing I'm going to be touching on on the seven figure contractor formula. So this is a formula of like things to do and ways to think in order to grow. Get out of that, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars mentality and get to that, you know, millionaire mentality of owning a million dollar business. So the first thing is the mindset. So business builder mindset. I'm not going to go super deep on mindset. A lot of the work that I do on systematizing businesses, yes, mindset's part of it, but I expect you to already kind of have that in place. And there's tons of books and lots of publications out there on mindset. But the big thing you want to keep in mind is you're going to have to kind of level yourself up, get out of that kind of hands-on manager type role. You're still going to have to do a lot of management, but get into the kind of the entrepreneur business builder mindset is what I call it. And this is building a business, you know, get out of like building homes, building, you know, projects, doing whatever. You are a business builder and you need to be thinking as someone who builds businesses. So building systems, building processes, figuring out tracking of how to track, you know, sales, how to track marketing. It sounds like a lot and it is, it takes time and there's definitely, you know, a right way and a wrong way to do it. If you need help with it, that's, that's what I'm here for. But the first thing that you need is to have the right mindset of, you can't just keep doing what you're doing now and just do it two or three times better, right? That's not how you grow a million dollar plus revenue business. I know this firsthand growing my business, you know, I was hands-on uh, as a you know, co contractor, subcontractor framer for many years and slowly worked into renovations and general contracting. I was, you know, hands-on when I started, ran a crew, you know, did decently, was profitable because I, you know, worked my ass off and I was good at what I did. But there became a point where I had to step away from that and it was a hard transition, but I made the transition and we grew really quickly. You know, we three times our revenue in one year and the train came off the tracks essentially, you know, like I, I was not in this builder mindset mentality and and things went sideways. I, you know, my financials were a mess, hiring, you know, too many people, growing too fast, just doing projects bigger than I'd done before. I was outside my comfort zone, which, you know, is a good thing, but it needs to be in controllable. And that's why just kind of trying to do the same thing, but, you know, multiply it is not a good way. You have to have the systems in place. You have to have the right mentality in place so that as you grow your revenue, you're just, you know, your foundation can support the, the larger business. So I'm not going to keep going up on the mindset much more than that, but just knowing that you need to be able to think in a different way to grow uh, the larger business. Second thing that I'm gonna be talking about is sales and financials. Starting a business and growing a business, sales and financials are super important because as you grow, you're gonna be adding more people to your team. You're gonna be kind of building this, this larger business that if your sales are all over the place and you don't have a consistent marketing strategy, if you're still the primary marketer, you're just gonna run yourself thin and you've got all these other things in your business you gotta take care of, right? So sales is super important and you should be tracking numbers. So if you know that, hey, on average, I'm getting, let's say two leads a week, one of those turns into a job, or maybe you're getting 10 leads a week and three of those turns into a job. So what's your ratio right now? If you're doing $500,000 in sales and you wanna to grow to a million and a half in, in revenue in the next year or two, then how many leads are you gonna need? Well, instead of those 10, maybe you need 30 leads coming in. Are you gonna be able to take 30 calls every week to you know produce the eight, nine jobs that you're gonna need? Probably not while you're doing everything else, right? So you need a system. System. You need somebody, you need a process. You need to be start thinking about the, the, the number side of it and how things are gonna look as you grow. What's your organization chart gonna look if you're here and you wanna be here, right? Which levels of management are you gonna have to have in place? Scaling is not an easy thing. So sales and financials will be the ticket to get there though. And then financials are so important because if you're not tracking your financials, it's very easy for things to go off the track. Like they did for me where I, you know, I took on some loans, I took on some debt. I, I was, you know, I didn't have great cash flow and you get in these sales crunches or you know you've gone from maybe three projects to, to seven or eight on the go and now you got money out there for materials for guys for labor you bought some new equipment you're expanding you're growing things are great until they're not and you look at your bank account and you're like shit I got no money what the hell happened I thought I was doing so great our revenues are way up but you didn't have a good system in place for collecting deposits or collecting money from clients you're not invoicing fast enough because you don't have an admin person who's doing your books properly invoicing clients you know efficiently
me every week or, or every two weeks, you know? So you gotta get that ironed down before you start to grow as your sales and marketing. All right, so moving on. Point number three that I'm gonna make of the seven figure contractor formula is management and people. So like I said before, as your company grows, you're gonna need new people, new roles, new management personnel, because you are not gonna be able to probably manage everything. Unless you're doing like multi-million dollar homes where you've got maybe two or three projects a year, you can probably manage that yourself and you, you're gonna have, you know, a multi-million dollar business, you know, fairly straightforward. But if you're not in that camp and you're not doing million, you know, plus home builds every um, year, then you're gonna need managers, your project managers, probably an admin as well as a sales manager, sales person, at least. You may still do the main managing, but you're gonna need people in those key roles so that you can step back from it. And in order for them to be effective, which is the big scare of why a lot of contractors, as they grow, they try to just do more and think like, oh, I'll be rich, you know, when, you know, when I'm, when I reach one and a half million or when I reach three million in revenue, then things will be great. But in reality, maybe they've just hired a whole bunch of people. Things are ineffective. They have no system. So things are falling off the rails. Their productivity, you know, tanks. They realize they're no richer than they were when they had the, you know, $500,000 business. So that is a very common thing that I see. So management people, again, fill out the organization chart, figure like where the key personnel need to be and build out one function at a time. And you don't always need full time people. So it is best when you can do that, but even just hiring an admin or a virtual assistant for like 10 hours per week, 20 hours per week, hire, you know, part-time salesperson even, start getting some experience with managing these types of people and having these types of people in your business. Even if you maybe don't have enough leads to keep one salesperson busy all the time, you can still look at, you know, incorporating those people into your business. So that is like the, the next step. Number four, so moving on, still with me here, systems and processes. If you know me, I love systems, I love processes. They make life so much easier. It's leverage, right? You've got the stick and, and the pendulum. And if you've got beautiful systems and processes in place, your leverage is amazing. That's the biggest differentiator between, you know, the mom and pop shops that, um, you know, are just kind of making an okay living to the actual business owner who's like, I have this business, it runs. Yes, I'm still involved in it, but it doesn't necessarily need me. I can take weeks off at a time and I know I'll still be profitable, I'll still be making money. And that is leverage. So leveraging people, leveraging finances, leveraging connections, leveraging, you know, the right marketing channels. So getting leverage, putting in a small small amount of effort, small amount of money and getting exponential, you know, uh, results from it. So this is your, your people, like I said, just leveraging systems, like using systems to your advantage, having the right software in place and having the right processes, having things implemented, having communication at a high level, having all your dashboards there. So you know what's going on in your business. So you know, like what decisions you need to make in your business. So that is a big thing. So you start to get these pieces in place, things start to run smoothly. You know, there's a lot of fluctuation and variance as you're scaling and growing a business as you're building these pieces. But if you get this stuff in early and you understand it early, your growth is just gonna be that much smoother and you're not gonna, you know, potentially have these like big, you know, crashes or unexpected, you know, financial issues or unexpected like, you know, manager leaves or key personnel leave or you have, you know, quality, go down the drain and stuff like this that can often happen as you grow a business. So yeah, really important to get all this stuff to work together. It's not easy, but there's great ways to do this. If you want help, like reach out to me. There's links in the description below in order to connect with our website and you know get on a call or whatever. But this is the way that you grow a seven figure contractor business. And then the fifth point, my last point that I'm gonna be making, you're still with me here, make sure you stick around to the end. I've got some, some tips on some great resources for you is define your success formula. So sometimes a lot of the time business owners sometimes you think you need a certain level of success aka money to feel secure to feel like you are successful essentially but you may not need as much as you think or you may be able to create a business that's doing less in revenue but more in profit and it's actually going to give you more benefits because it's easier to manage but it's more profitable just by being strategic but just by prioritizing the right things prioritizing the right clients, prioritizing the right systems, prioritizing the right clients and have an amazing business that's maybe not huge. Maybe you stay at that 2 million state, you don't need the $10 million business, but you're actually just as profitable as some of the larger businesses and you have this strategic advantage and these amazing systems and you can kind of package it and it runs really well without you, without the headaches of some of the, you know, trying to grow some of these larger establishments. So what's success mean for you? Is it taking a couple of weeks off, you know, every couple 
couple of months to, to go camping or go on vacation? Is it just, you know, working 10 hours or, or 20 hours in your business while still making, you know, several hundred thousand dollars a year? So what is that? Define it. And the business you need maybe to get what that success is for you, that lifestyle that you want, may not be as big or as you know crazy as what we want. I'm all about shooting for the moon and being, you know, have big goals, but your business may get you to where you want. And then you can even look at like things beyond your business of like, what's the next step? What's the step? Maybe you want to start another business. Maybe you want to give back and provide for charity or, you know, do some work for other organizations or, or you know, change the world essentially. So I'm going off on a tangent here. Great stuff though. Awesome to you. I know you can do it. Build that seven figure contractor business. There are links in the description to our website. You can get connected with me, the team and resources to help you. Tons of resources there. Make sure to check out these other videos. Keep learning, keep growing. I'm here for you. See you on the next one.